think I want to move on. I don't know. Like we, I mean, the next step is to actually like do the rest of the stuff here, where we um, down here, where we like get access to withdraw procedure, and then apply it. But I think that I want to move on rather than doing that. Is that right with you guys? Because there's one more of these. There's the one that like you have to then modify it to um, keep track of. Uh, yeah, what's the last one here? Modify the this thing by adding another local state variable. So if the if the count is accessed more than seven times with an incorrect password, it it invokes the procedure called the cops. All right, let's do that. Okay. So we're going to copy and paste this thing and then modify it. What happens? Oh. Wait. Something weird happened here. I just want to do undo. Okay, I just wanted to do this. And then paste. Okay. Okay, so it's going to be called make account secure balance and password. Okay, so what do we have to do? We have to keep track of another, we, have, we need another variable that is that if it's accessed more than seven consecutive times with an incorrect password, it invokes call the cops. Um, okay, so we could put this in different places. I guess it makes most sense in the dispatch procedure, which is actually checking the password. So I'm going to do this with Lambda rather than Let to show you guys the other way of doing it. So, because this is effectively what let does. So, we're going to say lambda of tries. And at first, I'm not going to change anything about, like, actually doing anything with tries. But what we're going to do is... This is right. Actually, I mean, so what I was thinking was then applying this to zero. Um, so that will create a procedure that has a environment frame where tries initially is bound to zero. And, and then it will evaluate that procedure. Um, the problem with this is each time dispatch is called, it will create a new one of these. So I think we have to do this at a higher level than inside the dispatch. Let's undo this. Did I make you guys draw the environment diagram associated with this? I hope not, because it's going to be really evil. No. Good. Okay, let's do it. Let's do it with wet here just so we don't go crazy. Alright, so then all this is going to be in the context of this frame existing and tries being, um, this will be a frame where tries, it gets a binding, it will initially be zero, we can do stuff. Um, so, all right. 
So pretty much what we have to do is each time you give it a good password, you reset tries to zero. And that's for the good password. Then for the bad password, what we're going to do is say, um, well, we're going to increment the we're going to increment the number of tries. And then if tries is greater than seven, tries greater than seven, we do call the comps. Otherwise, we say incorrect password. That's the else case of the bad password. And we, in the, so in this, this, all of this is the body of the let. And you can see the indentation is good. Each of these things is like, in, I have to have again, it's indented properly. So all that is the body of the let. So all that happens in the context of a frame where tries exists. Close this. So, all right, let's test it out. Um, all right, make count secure. Balance of the 100 passwords foo, and we have to like give that thing a name. Okay, so now we're going to try to withdraw. We don't even have to like actually do any. Remember, withdrawing is like it returns the withdraw procedure. So we could just ask for that withdraw procedure a bunch of times with the wrong password. Um, so we want to say the password is bar and withdraw. Okay, that's what's supposed to happen. That looked like a real error. Okay, so that's one, two, three, four, five, whoops. Seven. So far, so good. So now this one should give us the call the cops. Yeah. Hey, you know, the account's not actually locked. Right? Like, because we don't, um, we don't test for tries being more than seven. Um, like, so we can still, like, give it the correct password. So it's not really locked. Right, this will return the deposit or the withdrawal procedure. <laughs> I don't think I test for that in the, the auto testing. Do you guys see that? It's not really locked. Yeah, I thought the auto grader did test for that, but I might be wrong. I thought I remember having to change something. Yeah, let's actually lock it. So, let's see. So, I guess we could just do it here. We could make it an and. Um, um, less than prize eight. Then you're just going to keep getting, like, errors. It, it won't, it, it will only let you in if tries is less than eight. Okay. 
one. Whoops. Oh, that was that was the good password. One, two, three, four. Okay, so now if we try to get in, yep, where it actually is lost. That's cool. So it's going to, like, it's going to keep incrementing tries each time you try to get in, even if you get the right password now, but that's sort of okay. Um, there's no actual way to inspect tries. I mean, I guess like if we had some debugger that could go inside of things and see what's going on, but there's none of our code that can tell us like how many, how big tries is. Yeah. So I mean, going back to the environment diagram to think about what would be different between the one we just drew and this is that. Um, I mean, one way to think about it is that inside this frame that was created for the application of um, make account secure, where balance and password got bindings, and then withdraw, deposit, and dispatch were created, um, tries was created. You know, another way of doing this, I think some people did this in their code, is you could just define tries to be zero. Just like you're defining a procedure in the same frame, you know, if you're defining a symbol that's bound to a procedure. You could also, like, you don't, there's actually another frame that gets created because we did it with with let, and so that's a whole other frame, but it doesn't need to be in another frame. It could be in the same frame. I'm pretty sure you could do it with, let's try it, let's try it. I think you could do it with define. Let's try this. Like, let's say we just define tries to be zero. I'm actually quite curious if this will work. So that would put it in the same frame. That's probably the only change we need. There might be a, a, an extra paren that goes away. No, not really. No, there's got to be an extra paren somewhere. Yeah, there. Um, I got, yeah, all these need to be retabbed. OK. Yeah, I think this is fine. So that's a different way of doing it. I'm sure that's fine. That's, every time I see that error, it's like, what did I do wrong? But actually, that's what's supposed to happen. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah. Do you guys see the difference there? So it's a question of like where tries lives. So what we, the way we just made it now is we, we made a binding in the same frame that was created for the application of make account secure. Um, it, so it create, we, you know, we, we made a binding in that frame, which is totally fine for these purposes. Could I ask a question about the dispatch procedure, actually, in the environment diagram? Absolutely. Um, does the procedure itself, like, return to both the frame, the original frame, like frame one, and the frame Wait, let's keep generated by make account? Wait, which one's frame one? Are you, is this frame one? Uh, like, sorry, yeah. Like, does it return to both? I understand that, um, like, ACC is linked to the procedure itself, right. but does the procedure return to both frames, or does it return to just the original frame with ACC? So this is the procedure that's named dispatch, and we said define dispatch to be this procedure. Um, so there's a symbol in this frame which points to that procedure. And then at the very end of make account secure, it returns dispatch. So it returns this procedure. So this expression then binds ACC to that same procedure. So there's two things that 
that are the dispatch procedure. Inside this frame, it's called dispatch. And then inside the global frame, it's called ACC. Those are both the same object. They're both this, this dispatch procedure. Is that your question, Josh? Yeah, kind of, but the the um, return arrow, you mean uh, one? the arrow, the frame pointer. Yeah, that's just, yeah, that will point just back to to this frame. frame. Okay, yeah. just to that. Okay, it is that's sort of circular because the 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 symbol dispatch points to this procedure. Um, the thing that's not circular though is that like the dispatch procedure doesn't reference itself. Like if it were if if this were a recursive procedure, then it would. And then it would have to like look up in its own frame to find itself again to apply itself. Um, like so, it it doesn't. You know, it the body of the dispatch procedure it does need this frame pointer, um, but not for accessing itself, but for accessing the other stuff in that frame. All these other things it actually deals with. It deals with. It might it might uh, uh, obtain the withdraw procedure. It might obtain the deposit procedure, it deals with the password and balance, it also now also deals with try. So actually every other thing in its environment frame it does interact with. But uh, Oh, okay. That makes sense. And then like lexical scoping is the idea that because that frame has a frame pointer to the referencing frame, the original frame, it can walk back up and find any other variables that it may need. Yeah, that's like, right. If it needs to go all the way to the top level. Okay, cool. Thank let you. me actually let me build on this question and show you this will just take a moment a rewrite of this that makes the dispatch anonymous so because it doesn't actually reference itself it could just as well be anonymous and so all we have to do to make that is make this into a lambda of pnm and then this goes away. So we like create the lambda and return it in one fell swoop. That's totally fine. So now what I'm going to go back over here. Basically now what we've done is we've, I'm oh, sorry, this is the, the one that was called this patch. Now it's no longer called this patch. So like this part goes away, but that's fine because the only thing that needs to get a handle to it is at the top level when we come back and bind it to the name ACC. That's the key thing. This thing has access to all this stuff in the closure. It doesn't need to know about itself. Do you guys see that? So, I mean, now everything still works. Um, we can make the thing. And so, actually, now what is ACC? It's an unnamed procedure. And it's at line, like, it's at row 101 at position 2. It's there. Uh, the, you guys can see down here. Can you see my mouse? This is showing the position of the lambda expression. Do you guys see that? Yeah, that's actually really helpful, uh, reevaluating that as a lambda. 